How hard could it be to make a sofa? I just broke it. I made a bit of a mistake. No, really, I'm asking. How hard is this gonna be? This is a passion project of mine. The wife has given me a budget of $350 to make this dream come true because we're cheap. We are frugal. So I'm gonna go ahead and track the cost and the time that it takes to make this dream come true and ponder that age old question, should I just have bought it? For this project, I'm gonna mainly be using two by fours. I have a plan. You've got a plan, yes. Well, I have an idea of what this couch is gonna look like, something like this. I used Home By Me to create a 3D model after I already built the sofa. Smart, link in the description. My goal is to make this look like a real sofa and not just some outdoor furniture made out of two by fours. I'm gonna go ahead and build this from the ground up because I've never built a sofa before and I think that's where you start. This is the part of the project that I'm most familiar with and it starts at the miter saw. Then realizing I didn't have it plugged in. Once plugged in, I could go ahead and start cutting down the two by fours. This sofa is gonna have two feet that are gonna be 26 inches long, but I went ahead and quickly ran out of two by fours and then had to go to the store and then I could get back to work. Once back to work, I could go ahead and forget to plug in the saw again, get a little frustrated. Then I could go ahead and cut down the rest of the wood for the feet. I went ahead and cut the two by fours down into 18 pieces and 12 off cuts to act as filler. Oh, almost forgot to say, I squared up the two by fours on the table saw to make the glue up a little easier, or so I thought, more on that later. A little glue, the finger brush method, then wiping off the excess glue on the workbench, just like God intended. I glued up the first layer of the feet to make the rest of the glue up a little bit easier to manage. These Harbor Freight clamps. Does anyone else lose the little metal twisty bar as the end caps just keep falling off, unscrewing themselves? Or is this just me? It can't just be me. These feet are gonna be about six inches tall and about nine inches wide. This process is pretty simple. Add some glue, add a board, screw it down, then repeat it a bunch. The middle row doesn't have to be a full length board to save on some two by fours. Okay, now I have two feet. I'll go ahead and let the glue dry overnight. The next day, I went ahead and started the process of shaping the feet. First, I went ahead and added some bevel cuts to the blocks. On the miter saw, I went ahead and cut out some random angles to create a interesting look, at least interesting to me. These feet are the same style that I made for my bed, my TV stand, and my nightstand as well. Link to the playlist in the description. I went ahead and used some 80 grit sandpaper to remove any burn marks and hard edges. Then I needed to deal with my less than stellar glue up. I used a thin offcut and some glue to fill in most of the gap. I then added a healthy amount of wood filler to the feet and let them dry overnight. The next day I could go ahead and sand everything smooth all the way up to 220 grit. Now we need to go ahead and switch focus to the sofa base. I'm gonna make this sofa base 65 inches wide and 25 inches deep. I don't have anything set up right now for me to make repeatable cuts on the miter saw. So I went ahead and clamped the two two by fours together. With the off cuts, I went ahead and used some painter's tape to, well, tape them together. Then I could go ahead and cut the rails down to 22 inches. The assembly of the base is pretty simple. I made sure to drill pilot holes first to avoid any wood splitting. I didn't use glue on the base because somehow I thought to myself, what if I wanna take this apart in the future? Some days. The past me makes little sense to my present self. But that's what I did or didn't do in this case. In total, it took me two hours and 30 minutes to make the feet and the base. So what is the difference between a sofa and a couch? I Googled it for you. Sofas are for sitting on and couches are for laying on. So I'm making a sofa that will turn into a couch because kids and a short wife. I used my power of guesstimation to figure out the layout for the webbing. Thankfully, I nailed it on the first try. Then I went ahead and repeated myself on the other side. Now the moment is here and it's time to staple some webbing. I have never done anything like this before. So I Googled and YouTubed a bunch of videos trying to figure this out. I was pretty nervous to start with as I'm about to cast some checks that my mouth has been writing. From what I gathered, you have to pull the webbing to create a drum-like sound. Well, at least that's what the lady who I blindly trusted on YouTube said. 
So let's just go ahead and enjoy the soothing sounds of a staple gun. After about 200 staples, it just became a pretty relaxing and enjoyable process. I would be telling a different story though if I didn't buy a power staple gun and decided to use a manual staple gun. It took me one hour and 10 minutes to add the webbing. For the arm and backrest, I went ahead and planed down four two by fours to one inches thick. Some might ask, why didn't you just buy a one by four? Simple, one by fours are three quarter inch thick. Why that is? I have no idea. I'm sure there's a reason, might be worth a Google. My shop right now is a disaster, which is why I'm allowing dust to pretty much go everywhere right now. I'm in the process right now of updating my shop to better handle dust collection. This will be part of the focus of the next video I make. Now that I have the 2x4s at the proper thickness, I can go ahead and start cutting them down. I cut down the upper and lower backrest boards to 65 inches. For the upper and lower armrest, I need to go ahead and cut down four boards to 29 and 3 fourths inch long. The last cut I need to make is for the height of the armrest, which is going to be 19 inches tall. Well, okay, it's not the last cut, but it's the last cut to length. For the armrest, I decided to use a 45 degree miter joint to connect everything, so it didn't just end up looking like a bunch of 2x4s glued together. For the rest of the joinery, I'm going to go ahead and use pocket holes for the arm and backrest. I'm going to make sure that I put them in positions where you won't be able to see them once everything's put together. This was the quickest and easiest way I could think of for putting this all together. Question for those watching, what is your default, couch or sofa? Speaking of couch, do you know that in Portland, Oregon, they have a street spelled couch that's pronounced cooch, named after John H. Cooch, who was a major figure. Nope, nope, nope. nope. This is not about to become a history lesson. But not to be outdone, Texas has a city spelled humble, pronounced humble. I glued up the minor joints with some help from some corner clamps, making sure to use a very generous amount of glue. Once the glue was dry, I could go ahead and figure out the inside dimension of the arm and backrest, clean up any glue squeeze out, and make sure to do a test fit, then realize I have a problem. This is a little embarrassing. I didn't plane enough 2x4s down to 1 inch thick. Like I said earlier, I have part of a plan. A full plan and a cut list would have definitely saved me some time. Add insult to embarrassment, I messed up. So I made a bit of a mistake. This board right here is actually supposed to be on this side here, not the inside of this back stretcher. I wish I would have realized this, you know, a lot sooner. I'm gonna have to unscrew this and cut it off and then move it to the outside like it's uh, supposed to be. I'm glad I figured that out right now rather than, you know, later down the line, like when I'm trying to install it. For the inside frame, I started by ripping down the newly planed boards, most of them to one and a half inches wide. Then I could go ahead and rough cut the boards before cutting them down to final size. Before working on the inside frame, I started by adding some roundovers to areas that would be hard to reach later. Like the arm and backrest, the inside frame is going to be attached with glue and pocket holes. Before I can start attaching everything, I need to go ahead and glue up some corner pieces using some of the boards I ripped earlier and a full width piece. I just used glue and clamps on these as I was done for the day, so I let everything dry overnight. The next day, I needed to drill some pocket holes in the corner pieces, which would have been better to do before I glued everything up, but I'm half white, so I have some redneck ingenuity in me and got the job done. Then I went ahead and used some offcuts as a spacer to help glue and attach the inside frame together. I wasn't convinced that the armrest miter joints would hold up over time, so rather than use splines or dowels, I incorporated this inside frame into my design. You might notice these six pocket holes, and you might think that's excessive, and you would be right. We're only gonna end up using three of those pocket holes. When drilling the pocket holes, the jig slipped on me and drilled the holes too deep. I think it's because I didn't tighten the brass screw enough, so I had to re-drill all the holes, as the screws would have definitely poked out of the wood if I would have tried to use those holes. 
You don't know the happiness using this clamp brings me right now. When I first bought this clamp, they laughed at me. And by they, I mean just the wife. This will be the first time in seven years that I've actually used this clamp. It's made for moments like this. Do not do this. Don't drill or screw something towards your body. I'm only doing this to show you what not to do. This message has been brought to you by the Do As I Say, Not As I Do campaign. I'll stop myself right there. I need a bigger work surface. I know it looks like a comic book fight scene right now, but I dropped my camera trying to save the arm and backrest from falling on the floor. I've said it before. I don't say it again. Man, I, I love, love being a turtle. turtle. No, well, yes, but I need a bigger work surface, which is currently in the works. I don't know about you, but I don't like to run the router this high and close to my face. I'll have to plan for that in my shop update. I made sure to wear eye protection for obvious reasons. I went ahead and added some of the finest roundovers you might ever see on a sofa. And uh, there was a lot of them, pretty much everywhere. My camera overheated and died, so I went ahead and let it go cool down and charge. So I didn't capture myself adding wood filler to any gaps that needed it. But I did get plenty of shots of me sanding the sofa, so there is that. Once all the sanding was done, I could go ahead and bring the sofa over to the finishing garage. And a vacuum any dust up. Then it was finishing time. Finish him. No, no, not that type of finish. Three coats of some water based poly. On the arm and backrest, and on the feet as well. In total, it took 5 hours and 10 minutes to complete the arm and backrest. Someone or no one might be wondering, why in the world is a sofa a passion project of mine? Well, it all started with these cushions I got from my in-laws. Since receiving them five years ago, the idea of building a sofa has been on my mind. I originally got them back in Oregon, and I made sure to bring them with me to Texas, because I was not about to let 2,200 miles take my dreams away. We ordered eight yards of fabric from Amazon, and I got to work measuring, figuring out the cut pattern, and everything else that goes into sewing. My skills are limitless. My hands look very small on camera sometimes. Okay, you got me. The wife is gonna be handling this part of the project. I don't know how she does it. Magic, I'm guessing. Thankfully, she's not in the 1800s. The wife is the greatest seamstress, sewing lady that I know. Okay, full disclosure, she is also the only person I know that sews. She even sewed on a zipper to the cushion. My mind is blown. Truly magic, start the fire now. In total, it took the wife four hours to complete the tushy cushions, including prep time and sewing time. Bonus round. Real quick, I made a errand planning. I didn't think about the fact that the webbing would eventually bend the wood in the middle, so I needed to do a quick fix. I cut down a two by four left over to act as a spacer, then I could slide it into the middle of the base. But then I could also realize I cut it to the wrong size, then cut it to the right size, hammer it into place. A couple screws, and now we're ready to go. Problems and mistakes seem to be piling up right now. I got a few problems to deal with. One, I made the sofa base too wide, which creates problem two. I didn't order enough two inch foam. As my original plan was to have the cushion slide into the armrest area, allowing me to cut the foam in half. Problem three, I made the base too wide as well. So some creative problem solving is going to be needed. Another situation we found ourselves in we don't have that much OSB left over from our previous projects for the side and back panels. But with help from the wife, we figured out a way to save money, but also not have to go to the store and not have to break down a full sheet of OSB. We figured out how we could use a half sheet of OSB that we already had and a scrap piece of OSB to cut them down to smaller panels to make the larger panels. The 1x4s I'm ripping down right here are going to act as a thickening agent for the panels and a bonding agent for the three back panels. This will help solve problem 1 and 3. I use staples and glue to attach the 1x4s. For the three panel glue up, I made sure to have two full length strips as well as having two full width 1x4s in each of the seams. To solve problem 2, we're just gonna use some one inch foam that I've been holding on to for another project. This has officially become future Joseph's problem. Then the wife took over cutting out the foam and I could come back and save the day by spraying on some adhesive 
and attaching the OSB to the phone. You're welcome. Problem one is officially solved. Then I could go ahead and watch the wife add batting. I'm told it serves a purpose. And I wasn't listening to was thinking of something else. But I'm not sure. I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of stapling involved when you're making a sofa. More than I even thought possible. Then she had to go ahead and repeat the same steps, but with fabric. I thought woodworking was a repetitive task, which it is, but so is this thing. I would love to explain to you how she did the corners, but all I got is fold, staple, fold, staple some more. I'll go ahead and link to a YouTube video that gives better instructions. So problem four, this is a new one. The side panels stick out a little too much where it meets the sofa base. The obvious thing to do right here would be to remove some staples and remove some of the cushioning. But we decided just to add a bunch more staples. And it seemed to work out, so problem solved. For the back panel upholstery, it was pretty much the same as the side panel, but we did learn from our previous transgressions. We cut the two inch foam three inches short to create a little bit of a lip to make it easy for the back panel to slide in. This completely solved problem three. In total, it took two hours and 30 minutes to complete the back and side panels. Like all the greatest movies ever made, let's go ahead and finish this off with a quick montage. For the sofa base, stapled on some batting, the wife sewed the fabric onto some canvas fabric, stapled on the fabric, and the base was completed. To attach everything, I used screws to connect the base to the arm and backrest, the back panel to the arm and backrest, and then the armrest to the feet. For the side panels, cut down some quarter inch MDF, glued on some scrap wood, stapled on some fabric, realized that we might want to change the fabric one day, put on some Velcro, then attach the side panels. We added a quarter inch sheet of plywood to the back. No one is ever going to see it, so I put it in a spot in the video where only the truest of hearts will see it. In total, it took us an hour and a half to complete this part of the project. This project ended up taking me 16 hours and 50 minutes to complete. Unfortunately, I did end up going over budget. The total cost was $371.92. This includes $20 in miscellaneous items like screws, glue, and sandpaper. What this doesn't include is the seat cushions, which I got for free. I wouldn't think about even sitting on this sofa, as it might just fall apart. I'm totally kidding. Was it hard? If I would have been doing the sewing, yes. Was it worth it? Absolutely. But in a more real sense, no. But that is what dreams are made of. Hey, good. You must be crazy.